The following short introduction will give you a general overview of the Embraer 190. The Embraer 190 is a low-wing, twin-engine jet airplane of conventional structure, designed for medium to short-range operations and optionally long-range operations, ETOPS. The aircraft has a total length of 118 feet 11 inches, a wingspan of 94 feet 3 inches, and an approximate height of 34 feet 8 inches. It also features a pressurized cabin. The fuselage has a so-called double bubble design. The fuselage is pressurized between the forward pressure bulkhead, located forward of the cockpit, and the aft pressure bulkhead, which is located behind the aft electronics bay. Normal pressurization control is automatic, and the conditioned air is provided by two air conditioning packs located in the unpressurized area forward of the wing root. The cockpit can accommodate two crew members in the pilot seats and one observer on the jump seat. Two or optionally three flight attendants and depending on the aircraft configuration, 98 up to 108 passengers can be seated in the cabin. There are two galleys and two toilets, one of each in the front and the aft sections of the cabin. The cabin also features a wardrobe built next to the front passenger entrance. Two passenger doors on the left and two service doors on the right-hand side of the aircraft provide passenger and service access. An optional passenger air stair on the forward passenger door allows independent boarding. There are two cargo compartments below the passenger cabin, one in front and one behind the wing fairing. Two wing-mounted CF-34 10E high-bypass turbofan engines are installed on the Embraer 190. Engine controls and fuel scheduling are provided by a full-authority digital electronic control, FADEC, with fully modular design. The CF-34 10E incorporates the aerodynamic efficiency of wide-cord fan, which produces most of the engine's 18,500 pounds maximum thrust. To enhance aircraft braking capability, the engines are able to reverse thrust. The Embraer 190 is designed to operate from short runways and has a certified ceiling of 41,000 feet. The Embraer 190 has a maximum cruising speed of Mach 0.82. Depending on the long or normal, it can reach destinations upwards of 1,800 nautical miles with standard reserves. To maximize performance, a variety of modern composites like fiberglass and carbon have been used. These materials are lighter in weight and more durable than conventional aluminum, improving aircraft performance. Besides the conventional flight controls, the aircraft is equipped with an adjustable stabilizer and multifunctional spoilers. Aerodynamic characteristics are enhanced by leading edge slats and ground spoilers. The antennas on the Embraer 190 are located as shown.
The aircraft has a forward retracting twin wheel nose landing gear. The nose landing gear has a normal steering angle of up to 76 degrees either way. The shock absorbers are of oleo pneumatic type. The steering motor, taxi light, and one landing light are mounted on the nose landing gear. When the nose landing gear is extended, the rear doors remain open while the front doors reclose after extension or retraction. The main landing gears also have oleo pneumatic shock absorbers and twin wheels and retract sideways. With a full deflection of the nose wheel, the aircraft can theoretically turn on taxiways as narrow as 22 meters, 71 feet. Note that the largest clearance is required by the tail, which is not visible. In a maximum turn, either the left or the right main landing gear remains stationary, marking the center of the turn. The general cockpit interior provides an ergonomic working space for two pilots, one observer, and also storage of working and emergency equipment. The cockpit is configured as follows. Two pilot seats, a foldable flight observer seat positioned just in front of the cockpit door, a reinforced cockpit door is optional. When not in use, the seat stows behind the pilot seat. A cockpit bulkhead with a lockable door. Two control columns and rudder pedals. Crew emergency exits on direct vision windows on each side of the cockpit. A main instrument panel protected by a glare shield. Control pedestal located between the two pilot seats. Overhead panel located in the center of the ceiling panels. Lateral consoles located beside each pilot seat. Aft right-hand lateral console, also called observer console. The pilot seats are part of the cockpit equipment. The seats provide accommodation to pilot and co-pilot during normal and emergency operations without increasing workload. Each seat is attached on two seat tracks, which allow them to be adjusted fore and aft. A lateral outboard displacement allows each seat to be stowed while it is located at the rear seat track stop level. This position allows easy entry of the pilot or co-pilot without stepping over the central pedestal. A vertical seat adjustment allows the pilot or co-pilot to properly adjust their eyes to the cockpit environment. The height adjustment of the seat is made by means of the electrical actuator, which is operated by a control switch on the seat. Mechanical backup, a crank, for height adjustment is provided in case the electrical system is not available. The seats are identical in their design and operation, differing only in the symmetrical arrangement of the controls. The seats have longitudinal lateral adjustment lever with mechanical operation. Control switch for electrical actuation of the seat height adjustment with mechanical backup. Control for backrest declining with hydromechanical operation. Adjustable armrests and headrest with mechanical operation. Handle for the thigh rest support adjustment with mechanical operation. Push button actuator for lumbar support, which actuates a foam bag with air in it, allowing many different adjustments. Handle for harness inertial device manual locking. A restraint system is attached to the seat structure. The safety belts are a five point harness with one point quick release buckle. There is an inertia reel for the torso restraint system and a provision is made for life vest stowage on the seat back, also capable of carrying a fire glove, optional, for emergency equipment support. 
The seats must be adjusted to suit the pilot's optimum viewing position. To accomplish this, the seat has to be moved up or down until the pilot's line of sight reaches the horizontal plane of the black and white factory adjusted ball indicators. When the horizontal plane of the ball indicators is reached, the seat must be moved fore or aft until the white ball indicator becomes aligned to the black ball indicator. Once the optimum seat position is found, the pedals can then be adjusted through the pedal adjustment switch. The crew emergency windows are located in the cockpit on the left and right hand sides. When closed, they are pushed against the window frame by an over center mechanism and held in position by a locking mechanism. The windows are open manually. They have a locking mechanism that is released by pressing the button located on the top of the handle. As the window is unlocked, the handle must be pulled backward in order to actuate the roller's latching mechanism, sliding the window inside and backward along the tracks. The red indicator is pulled out of its housing to indicate the window is not fully closed. A position lock system permits the window to stop in an intermediate position and does not allow closure unless the lever lock is moved into the close window position. In an emergency, when leaving the aircraft by the doors is impossible, the crew can open the windows and exit by two ropes which are stowed above the windows. The instrument and control panel system includes all fixed or movable panels and their components. The system is divided into several subsystems. The main panels, which include the primary instruments of the pilot and the co-pilot. The glare shield panel, which includes the guidance panel, the display and light control panels. The control pedestal and the overhead panel, which consists mainly of arrays for controlling the aircraft systems. On the main panel, you will find all primary instruments. The main panel includes the pilot panel, the center panel, and the co-pilot panel. On the pilot panel, the following components are installed. The primary flight display, PFD-1, The multifunction display, MFD-1. The reversionary panel, and the footrests. On the center panel, the following components are found. The engine indication and crew alerting system display. ICAS, the Integrated Electronic Standby System, the Auto Brake Selector Knob, the Ground Proximity Terrain Inhibit Push Button, the Emergency Parking Brake Light, the Landing Gear Warning Inhibit Push Button, the Ground Proximity Glide Slope Inhibit Push Button. The ELT Panel. The Landing Gear Control Panel. And the Clock. On the Co-Pilot Panel, the following components are installed. The Primary Flight Display. PFD-2 The Multifunction Display MFD-2 The Optional Water Dump Button The Cabin Light Timer and Reset Button The Reversionary Panel and the footrests.
The glare shield panel system provides protection against sun washout for the main instrument panel. Besides the guidance panel, the display and light control panels, the glare shield panel includes the master warning and master caution push button lights. The control pedestal has three primary sections. A control pedestal forward panel, a control stand, and a control pedestal aft panel. The following components are on the forward panel. The two multifunction control display units, the engine control panel, and the flight controls mode panel. The following components are on the control stand. Two cursor control devices. Two thrust levers. A steep approach button. A takeoff configuration button. The ICUS full button. A ram air turbine manual deploy panel. And a speed brake lever. The following components are fitted on the control pedestal aft panel. One emergency parking brake handle. Two audio control panels. One ground proximity flap override button. One slat flap selector lever. A trim panel. Two passenger address buttons. And the elevator and aileron disconnection handle. And an optional printer. Most of the controls for the aircraft system are located on the overhead panel. The overhead panel system is divided into subpanels, which have integrated lighting for night flight purposes. The subpanels and controls found on the overhead panel are the digital voice data recorder panel, the electrical system control panel, The cockpit light control panel. The fire protection control panel. The fuel control panel. The passenger signs control panel. The APU control panel. The windshield wiper control panel. External light control panel. The hydraulic system panel. The pressurization control panel. The ice protection control panel. The air conditioning and pneumatic control panel. And the oxygen control panel. The Modular Avionics Units, MAU, are cabinets that house modules assigned to different functions in an integrated architecture. The MAU houses avionics and non-avionics functions. Among the avionics functions, the MAU houses air data application, autopilot, auto throttle, data acquisition, display control functions, Flight Director
Flight Management System, FMS. Flight Control Modules. Global Position System. Monitor Warning System. Stall Protection Warning. And Wind Shear Guidance. MAUs 1 and 2 are located in the forward electronics bay, whereas MAU 3 is located in the center electronics bay. Master warning and caution lights are installed on each pilot glare shield panel. Cast messages are presented in the upper right corner of the ICUS display. Master warning and caution lights blink when any warning or caution message is presented on the ICUS or ARLs are generated in the ARL warning unit. To acknowledge, stop, a presented warning or caution message from blinking, the master warning or caution light push button must be pressed. You can either use the related push button on the pilot or on the co-pilot side. The airplane has provisions for three galleys. G1 and G2 are located in the forward fuselage by the forward service door. G3 is located in the aft fuselage adjacent to the aft service door. The galleys provide an area for food storage and preparation and stowage of other miscellaneous items. The basic design of G1 provides storage area for two trolleys and one standard unit. It also has a hot liquid container, HLC, a coffee maker, sink, and a waste disposal unit. The G2 is equipped with one oven. In addition to storage areas, G3 has two ovens, one HLC, a coffee maker, and a waste disposal unit. To turn off the electrical power in abnormal situations, all three galleys are provided with circuit breakers. A passenger service unit, PSU, is installed over each seat row. It provides the following services. Passenger information sign, including no smoking and fasten seat belt signs. A reading light with associated control button at each passenger seat. Gas per air for each individual passenger seat. A push button and indicator for cabin crew call. A loudspeaker for information from the flight and cabin crew. And oxygen mask dispensing units. The Embraer 170-190 standard configuration has two lavatories, one in the forward area and another in the aft area. Both lavatories are equipped with a toilet and sink, assist handles, no smoking and return to seat signs, a cabin crew button, oxygen dispensing units with two masks, a waste compartment with an integrated fire extinguisher, and a smoke detector. A baby changing table can be found in the rear lavatory. The lavatory doors are designed to prevent anyone from becoming trapped inside the lavatory. The door can be unlocked from either side. The Emergency Locator Transmitter ELT is a unit that transmits signals through emergency frequencies in an emergency condition. The emergency frequencies currently in use are 121.5 MHz, 243 MHz, and 406 MHz. The operation of the emergency locator transmitter will help the search and rescue crews to more easily locate the aircraft position. The emergency locator transmitter system includes the following components. The transmitter unit, located in the aft avionics compartment. An emergency locator transmitter buzzer, located next to the transmitter unit. An external antenna, mounted on the top of the fuselage. And 
the remote panel located on the cockpit main instrument panel. An optional ELT nav interface unit can be installed, which provides the ELT with GPS signals. The 406 MHz transmitter transmits every 50 seconds for 24 hours and is then automatically shut down. The 121.5 and 243 MHz transmitters transmit continuously until the batteries are discharged, which takes approximately 72 hours. The emergency locator transmitter unit is housed in a high-impact fire-resistant case and contains the following internal components. A G-switch, the transmitter, and a battery. The emergency locator transmitter can be activated either automatically using the internal G-switch or manually using the two-position on-off switch on the front face of the transmitter. The emergency locator transmitter buzzer provides an aural sound to alert the pilot when the ELT has been activated and is transmitting. Its signal is loud enough to be heard outside the aircraft when the engines are off. The ELT buzzer receives electrical power from the emergency locator transmitter battery and therefore is not dependent upon aircraft battery operation. The antenna is located on the top of the rear fuselage and is connected through two coaxial cables to the transmitter. Control for the emergency locator transmitter system is provided through an emergency locator transmitter remote panel located on the cockpit main instrument panel. The remote panel contains the red transmit alert light and an on arm switch. The red transmit alert light will illuminate as soon as the emergency locator transmitter starts transmitting. In the arm position, the on arm switch permits automatic activation of the emergency locator transmitter. In the on position, the emergency locator transmitter is activated. The emergency locator transmitter can be operated either manually or automatically. Under normal conditions, the on-arm switch on the ELT remote switch panel is in the arm position and the on-off switch of the ELT unit is in the off position. Upon impact, the G-switch will automatically activate, which activates the emergency locator transmitter. The LED on the ELT remote switch panel will continuously flash. For manual operation, the on-off switch on the emergency locator transmitter unit or the on-arm switch on the ELT remote switch panel must be at the on position. The status of the emergency locator transmitter, active or not active, is indicated on the ELT remote switch panel. When the ELT is active, a continuous flashing light will be present on the ELT remote switch panel. If a fault is detected, the light provides a coded signal following the initial one-second pulse. The coded signal and related problems. One flash indicates a G-switch loop open failure. Three flashes indicate a 406 MHz transmitter problem. Seven flashes indicate a battery problem. The water distribution system has two subsystems, and there is one system for toilet assembly waste collection. The potable water system supplies pressurized potable water from a tank to the galleys and lavatories. The gray water system drains serviced water from galley and lavatory wash basins overboard. The forward and aft drain masts provide means for draining the potable and gray water overboard. They are ice protected by temperature sensor and heating elements. The vacuum waste system collects and stores human waste from the toilet assemblies. All systems work automatically. Indications are shown on the flight attendant panel. In case of water system leaks in the fill line, the water system may be isolated by means of manual shutoff valves. 
The potable water system supplies pressurized water from a tank to the galleys for food service and to the lavatories for washing. Bleed air pressure from the engine or APU is used as the primary pressure source of the system. Water tank quantity and system faults can be monitored on the aft flight attendant panel. The potable water storage tank is located under floor behind the aft cargo compartment. A sensor measures the water level and indicates the quantity on the flight attendant panel. An overflow tube is provided to protect against overfilling. Ground service personnel fill potable water through the service panel into the water storage tank. In the tank, the water is pressurized and flows via distribution lines to the forward and aft galleys and lavatories. The flight crew can command in-flight potable water drainage by depressing the water dump push button indicator located in the cockpit console. The aft drain valve opens and in the push button, an illumination indicates an on status. The water in the tank will be drained via the aft mast mainly. The drainage is inhibited in case the landing gear is extended or faulty drain mast heater indication in the aft flight attendant control panel. To stop in-flight drainage, the dump button has to be pressed again. Note, the full drainage of the system may take up to 10 minutes. The waste disposal system consists of the gray water system and the vacuum waste system. The gray water system collects the water from the lavatories and galley sinks and is drained through drain masts overboard or while on ground stored in optional gray water holding tanks. The vacuum waste system provides waste collection and storage from the toilet assemblies and is serviced through the single service panel on the aft right hand side of the aircraft. If a potable water leak occurs in the toilet rinse line, manual shutoff valves isolate the water system. There are waste tank quantity and several fault indications visible on the flight attendant panel. If both waste tank sensors detect a full condition, the toilet flush will be automatically deactivated. More information is provided in the flight attendant section of this computer-based training. The Embraer 190 lighting system provides lighting to all essential parts of the aircraft. It assures safe and proper operation under normal and emergency conditions. Inside the aircraft, light is provided to the cockpit, cabin, cargo and service compartments. Outside light is provided for navigation, orientation and identification. In the event of an emergency evacuation, a group of three overwing emergency lights located near each overwing emergency exit will illuminate to indicate the evacuation direction. In case of total power loss, Power units provide temporary DC power for emergency lighting. The external lighting system uses high intensity lights that provide illumination for taxiing, takeoff, and landing procedures. They also provide in flight orientation and identification of aircraft's position and illuminate the aircraft operator logo. The external light system includes the following subsystems. The landing lights. The taxi lights. 
the navigation lights, the inspection lights, the logo lights, and the anti-collision lights. In the event of an emergency evacuation, a group of three overwing emergency lights located near each overwing emergency exit will illuminate to indicate the evacuation direction. The Embraer 190 has a total of three taxi lights with two separate switches for appropriate ambient lighting. The two taxi lights in the wing to fuselage fairing have a common switch, while the nose wheel taxi light has a separate switch. The nose gear taxi light will automatically extinguish if the nose gear is not in the down locked position. Two landing lights are fitted in the wing leading edges, close to the fuselage, and one landing light is installed on the nose landing gear assembly. They are each controlled by separate switches located on the overhead panel. Three navigation lights, nav lights, assemblies are installed inside a transparent cover assembly on each wingtip front and rear side. They are turned on at the external lights panel. Each light assembly has two lamps. Normally only one lamp is on while the other lamp in the light assembly is on standby. The standby lamps operate from a separate electrical source. If the primary system fails, the standby system can be activated by the maintenance personnel on ground the logo light system provides illumination of the carrier's logo which is located on the vertical stabilizer the logo lights are controlled by a switch located on the overhead panel wing inspection lights enable the flight crew to detect ice buildup on the engine intake and wing leading edges the wing inspection lights are controlled by a switch on the overhead panel the anti-collision light system includes strobe lights and red beacon lights the four strobe lights supply reference from one aircraft to another when in flight. The strobe lights are controlled by the strobe light switch located on the overhead panel. Red beacon lights are used during ground operations to warn other traffic and airport personnel. One red beacon light is installed on top of the main fuselage and one is on the lower side of the main fuselage. The red beacon lights are controlled by a switch located on the overhead panel. In case of strobe lights failure, the bright red beacon lights can be selected on the maintenance panel located inside the cockpit. The flight compartment lighting system provides lighting to the work area panels and instruments and consists of the following subsystems the cockpit light system 
which provides beam ambient lighting, used on the sidewalls, seats, and floor of the crew station and observer area. The instrument and control panel light system, which provides lighting for instruments, panels, and push buttons. And the flood storm light system, which provides a proper lighting level in the cockpit for the instruments and assures instrument readability. The cockpit lights include the following components. Two dome lights located on the cockpit ceiling, which are controlled by a switch on the overhead panel. Power to the dome lights is supplied by the essential DC bus number three. This permits cockpit lighting in electrical emergency conditions. The pilot, co-pilot and observer reading lights installed on the ceiling. They help the flight crew to read maps, checklists, and manuals. The lighting intensity level can be adjusted by clockwise or counterclockwise movements of the reading light's inner bezel. The units permit a light beam orientation, zoom, and full movement in any direction by turning the outer bezel. The pilot's and co-pilot's chart holder assembly each have an associated chart light for adequate illumination. They are located over the left and right side windows. Two on-off variable intensity potentiometers, located on the pilot's and co-pilot's glare shield panels, control the chart holder light's brightness. Turning the knob to the full counterclockwise position turns the light off. The light's control panel is integrated into the overhead panel. It corresponds with the on-off light control knobs. Turning these control knobs in the clockwise direction brightens the background lights of the main panel, the overhead panel, and the pedestal. As a discrete function of the overhead panel control knob, the background lights can be set to bright or dim illumination. Turning the overhead panel lights off will automatically set the enunciator lights to bright intensity. The enunciator lights can be tested by pushing the enunciator lights test push switch. The floodlights, also called storm lights, provide sufficient lighting intensity to illuminate the main cockpit panel and prevent cabin crew blinding during lightning conditions. The floodlights, located under the main panel, are controlled by an on-off variable intensity control knob on the glare shield panel. The pilot's PFD, MFD, and ICUS display brightness controls are located on the left glare shield panel, while the co-pilot's PFD, MFD, and standby instruments brightness controls are located on the right glare shield panel. The passenger compartment lighting system provides illumination for the cabin. The system consists of the passenger cabin light system, the passenger warning sign system, the reading and attendant call light system, the courtesy stair light system, the lavatory light system, the galley light system, and the entrance light system. The passenger cabin lights provide general illumination of the cabin and include the ceiling lights mounted above the passenger service unit structure and the sidewall lights mounted along the sidewalls. Control is provided by four switches located on the forward and aft flight attendance panel. Two of the switches are used to turn the lights on and off and the other two switches are used to control the brightness of the lights. The passenger warning signs provide the passengers and flight attendants with the following signs. No smoking. Fasten seat belts. Return to seat. And lavatory occupied. Note that the no smoking and fasten seat belt signs will illuminate automatically in case of depressurization or the cabin altitude exceeding 14,000 feet. Note. Depending on aircraft configuration, the no smoking sign is replaced by no electronic devices sign. 
The reading and attendant call light system provides adequate lighting for reading and information for attendants regarding passenger or pilot need. The attendant call panel contains the attendant call lights, which provide visual indication to the attendant when a call from the pilots or passengers is received. Test switches installed on the attendant panel are used to check the PSU reading lights, attendant call panel lights, zonal lights, and lavatory lights. The courtesy lights provide lighting for forward and rear main and service door entrances, the cockpit step between the cockpit and the cabin, and the DC ceiling lights mounted on the overhead bins. Courtesy lights are controllable by a switch mounted on the flight attendant panels. The switch gives the crew the option of having the courtesy lights in off or auto mode. Under normal operating conditions, the DC lights are controlled by the cabin lighting system. When normal aircraft power is not available, for example, on ground with the APU not running, it is still possible to use the courtesy lights and DC ceiling lights. In this case, the hot bus provides power to these lights. To conserve battery power, these lights operate on a five-minute cycle. A reset button located on the flight attendant panels and as an option on the cockpit main panel, first officer, allows an additional five minutes of lighting every time the switches are pressed. Lights are installed in service and cargo compartments to provide technical and ground handling personnel with adequate lighting. All of these compartment lights are activated by a micro switch or manually when the respective compartment door is opened. The emergency light system provides lighting in case there is an electrical emergency condition. It provides enough cabin and exterior lighting to assure safe crew and passenger evacuation even in poor visibility conditions. The emergency lighting system is powered by six emergency light power units, ELPUs. Three ELPUs are installed in the forward section and three in the rear section of the fuselage to ensure power supply in case the cabin breaks apart after a crash landing. The ELPUs automatically provide electrical power to the emergency lights in case of a power loss on the DC buses or airplane electrical power is turned off. When it is set to the armed position via the passenger signs panel located on the cockpit overhead panel and the flight attendants panel. The system can be commanded to the on position by the crew or the flight attendants at any time. Test Procedures The system test made via cockpit overhead panel is just to check the cockpit emergency light and the ICUS messages. The system test made via the forward or aftward flight attendants panel is the one that checks the lights itself and also activates the system recharging logic by means of the minimum time required on the procedures below. Manually, by pressing the ON, armed switch to ON, which must be set to the armed position again after 70 seconds. Automatically, by just pressing and releasing the test button. In this case, the system will automatically return to the armed position after 60 seconds. The ELPUs enable emergency illumination for at least 10 minutes. The ELPUs are recharged by the DC buses. All six emergency exits are marked with exit locators, markers, and identifiers which are clearly visible when energized under conditions of complete darkness.
For general cabin emergency illumination, floodlight assemblies are installed on the aisle ceiling panels distributed along the fuselage. Four emergency exit area floodlight assemblies are installed at each exit. Their purpose is to illuminate the passageway leading from the main aisle to each of the four exit openings. The floor proximity emergency escape path markings are a photoluminescent type and guide passengers to the nearest exit in conditions of dense smoke. The photoluminescent escape path marking near the overwing emergency exits contain red arrows to indicate the exit route. Once outside, the passengers are provided with LED lighting on the sides of the emergency slides and also by a group of three overwing emergency lights located near each overwing emergency exit to indicate the evacuation direction. The emergency light system may be commanded by the emergency light switch located on the overhead panel or by the attendant emergency light switch located on the attendant control panel. The emergency light switch in the cockpit has three positions. In the off position, the emergency lights are permanently turned off. This position prevents the emergency lights from illuminating and the batteries from being drained after normal power shutdown. In the arm position, the emergency lights are in the standby mode and the batteries are charged. When normal aircraft power is lost, the emergency lights will automatically illuminate by power from the ELPU battery packs. In the on position, the emergency lights are manually turned on and supplied by power from the ELPU battery packs. The emergency light switch on the cabin attendant panel has two positions. In the armed position, the emergency lights remain in the mode determined by the cockpit switch. This is the normal flight position. In the on position, the emergency lights are turned on using power from the battery packs, regardless of the cockpit emergency light switch position. The legend on, located in the attendant control panel, is illuminated to indicate the switch selection mode. Note that the message will be displayed on the ICUS. Two rechargeable flashlights are provided to help the crew during an emergency condition. There are four types of doors. Passenger doors, cargo doors, the service doors, and the overwing emergency exit doors. On the forward passenger door of the aircraft, an optional air stair can be installed that is stowed behind the wardrobe. Two passenger doors are installed on the left-hand side of the fuselage. The passenger doors are fail-safe plug-in type doors. They can be opened and closed from inside or outside. Both doors can be used as emergency exits and are equipped with emergency evacuation slides. There are two service doors installed on the right-hand side of the aircraft. These doors can also be opened and closed from inside or out. Since the service doors are also emergency exits, they are equipped with emergency evacuation slides. Access to the two cargo compartments is gained through the forward and aft cargo doors on the right-hand side of the fuselage. The cargo doors can only be operated manually by an external handle. A vent flap is installed in each door for pressure equalization and to lock the door. When the door is fully open, it will automatically be kept in this position and must be manually released for closing. To release the door from the open position, a rod is located in the cargo compartment. The forward avionics compartment access hatch is on the bottom of the forward fuselage. When it is opened and moved backwards on the track, the forward avionics compartment can be entered. The middle avionics compartment can be accessed through the middle avionics compartment access door 
located on the left side of the center fuselage. The unpressurized area of the rear fuselage is accessed through the rear fuselage door on the right hand side. The fueling compartment access door on the right hand wing allows access to the refueling service panel and refueling adapter. A door indication and warning system informs the cockpit crew about the status of the doors on the ICAS and MFD. The following doors are monitored by proximity sensor switches. The two passenger doors, the two service doors, the two overwing emergency exit doors, and the two cargo doors. The following doors are monitored by switches. The forward avionics compartment access hatch, the middle avionics compartment access door, the rear fuselage door, and the fueling compartment access door. The passenger door has an actuating and locking mechanism that permits locking and unlocking the door manually using either the internal or the external handle. The passenger door is provided with an emergency evacuation slide mechanism. The emergency evacuation slide is stowed in a hard container at the lower part of the door and is controlled by a handle on the inner side of the door. When the door is open from the outside, the emergency evacuation slide release mechanism is disabled automatically. When the arming lever is operated, the release mechanism of the emergency evacuation slide moves to the disarmed position. A visual indicator, located at one end of the girt bar, shows if the emergency evacuation slide mechanism is armed or disarmed. If the release mechanism of the emergency evacuation slide is armed, the slide will be actuated when the door is opened. A dedicated battery powers the escape slide lights, which will be on for a minimum of 10 minutes even after escape slide disconnection. In case of ditching, the escape slide may be used as a flotation device after disconnection from airplane. If the mooring line is not manually detached from the airplane in an emergency situation, the system is fail-safe in that the mooring line will break free from the slide if enough load is applied. To open the door from outside, push the access panel and pull up the lower half of the external handle. This action opens the vent flap and will disarm the emergency evacuation slide automatically. Continuing pulling the external handle upwards unlatches the door and move the door to lock it in the fully open position. Warning. Make sure that the vent flap is closed flush with the door before opening the door from the outside. If the external handle is used to open the door while the slide is armed and the vent flap is open, door emergency opening operation will occur and the escape slide will deploy. To close the door from outside, use the door stabilization handle to disengage the door hook from the fuselage. Close the door and pull down the external handle to the latched position. And finally, lock the door by closing the vent flap.
To open the door from inside, pull the vent flap internal handle and the arming lever upward. This opens the vent flap, unlocks the door, and disarms the emergency evacuation slide. To unlatch the door, pull the internal handle upward. Visual indicator shows that the emergency evacuation slide is disarmed and that the door is unlocked. Now push the door outward and move the door to lock it in the fully open position. To close the door from inside, pull the door handle to release the door stabilization hook from the fuselage. When the door reaches its latching position, push down the internal handle. Visual indicators show whether or not the door is latched. To lock the door and arm the emergency evacuation slide, pull down the vent flap handle and the arming lever. Visual indicators show if the door is locked and the emergency evacuation slide is armed. To open the door in the emergency mode, pull the internal handle upward, which opens the vent flap and unlocks the door. Visual indicators show that the emergency evacuation slide is armed and that the door is unlocked. Now push the door outward and the pneumatic emergency system will open the door automatically until it locks in the fully open position. Two overwing emergency exit doors, one each located on the wing center, exist for passenger evacuation in the event of an emergency. The overwing emergency exit doors are designed as Type 3 emergency doors and can be opened from inside or outside. They can be closed only from inside. When closed, a green indication window indicates that the door is in the locked position. To open the overwing emergency exit doors from the inside, proceed as follows. Remove the upper access cover. Pull the handle and support the exit door at the lower grip. Remove the overwing emergency exit door from the passage. To open the overwing emergency exit doors from the outside, proceed as follows. Press the access cover to unlock the overwing emergency exit door. Push the overwing emergency exit door inwards and remove it from the passage. Emergency door opening systems are installed on all passenger and service doors to assist the crew in opening the doors in an emergency situation. The emergency opening system is installed on the support arm and its operating mechanism is connected to the emergency evacuation slide handle. In addition, a pressure gauge is provided in order to be able to check system pressure. When the emergency evacuation slide handle is in the safe position, the emergency door opening operating mechanism is disarmed. When the handle is moved to the armed position, 
the emergency door opening system will also be armed. When the main internal handle is then moved to the fully up position, the system will activate and fully open the door automatically. In case of ditching, all doors can be used as emergency exits once they are supposed to be over the waterline. Two cargo doors are installed on the fuselage lower right side to permit access to a baggage bay for baggage loading and unloading. The forward and aft cargo doors are opened and closed manually from the outside of the aircraft and are mechanically held in the open position. The opening and closing movements are facilitated by compensation devices. The two doors have differing geometry, but perform the same functions. To open the cargo door, push in the ditching push button and open the vent flap. Now, push in the main handle access flap and pull the main handle up to turn the main handle shaft. Then, lift the cargo door with the main handle. The cargo door is assisted by the two gas spring actuators that push on the cargo door support arms. When the door reaches the fully open position, two stabilization cams engage with full open stops on the fuselage to hold the door open. To close the cargo door, push the stabilization handle. Assisted by the gas spring actuators, the cargo door moves down. When the door reaches its closed position, it is necessary to push down the main handle until the cargo door touches the door frame. Push down the main handle which engages the latches and pull out the vent flap to lock the door. The reinforced cockpit door is ballistic and intrusion resistant. Designed in accordance with requirements issued by international airworthiness authorities. The electromechanical latch installed on the cockpit side of the door can be remotely operated by the cockpit door control panel and by the passenger cabin control panel. The door latch can be manually operated by means of the mechanical handle on the door latch. The electromechanical door latch is electronically controlled from the cockpit by the cockpit door control panel. This panel contains a test button, an unlock indication light, the inhibit push button, and the guarded lock push button. The electromechanical door latch is electronically controlled from the cabin by a control panel in the cabin. This panel contains an emergency call push button, a white, a red, and a green lead. Actuating the emergency call push button will illuminate the white LED in the panel. Activate the door unlock indication 
on the cockpit door control panel and start the chime alarm sequence. The ding-dong sound chime remains on for four seconds and is repeated three times at nine-second intervals, during which the sound chime remains paused. After the third chime cycle ends, white LED in the panel extinguishes and the green LED illuminates, indicating that the cockpit door is unlocked. If the inhibit push button on the cockpit door control panel is pressed, it inhibits within 30 seconds after emergency call push button is pressed. Inhibits this signal for 500 seconds. Extinguishes the flashing unlock indication on the cockpit door control panel and illuminates the red LED on the cabin cockpit door control panel indicating that the emergency call is temporarily inhibited. The guarded lock push button on the cockpit door control panel has the following functions. It controls the cockpit door's power supply, activates and deactivates the electromechanical door latch, deactivates the inhibition control, resets the ding-dong sound and emergency call command, and resets the green LED on the door's control panel in the passenger cabin. The test button, when pressed, will continually test the ding-dong as long as the test button is pressed, regardless of audio selection. With the mechanical handle on the door latch, the latch locking system can be overridden in case of an electrical failure. The normal, default position of the handle is in the up position. Turning the handle down disconnects the latch from the solenoid and manually unlocks the cockpit door. Note, latch manual operation must be used to override the locking system only in case of system electrical failure. The override switch installed in the electromechanical latch manually unlocks the door. Actuating downwards the override switch alternates between locked and unlocked status. If the door is unlocked, a red indication is shown on the switch. The door is locked when the green indication is shown. The security lever is used to avoid the down movement of the override switch. The air stair allows crew and passengers to gain easy access to the aircraft without the use of ground equipment. There is one set of air stairs installed in the aircraft at the forward passenger door. By the command set in the control panel on the wardrobe, the air stairs can be extended or retracted electrically, powered by DC bus 1. In case of system failure or aircraft de-energized, extension or retraction is possible by backup system. After retraction, the air stair can be stowed behind the wardrobe. The forward passenger door is equipped with an optional integrated air stair. The air stair is stored and locked behind the wardrobe. To operate, the air stair can be unlocked and pulled from the stowed position behind the wardrobe. When the air stair moves over the tracks towards the door, the unlock light illuminates on the control panel. When the air stair is in front of the door and locked, the unlock will go off and the ready light will illuminate. By pressing and holding the down button on the control panel, the ready light will blink, becoming steady when the air stair wheels touch the floor. To retract the air stair, the up button on the control panel must be pressed and held. The ready light will blink becoming steady when the air stair is completely retracted in front of the door. 
Then the air stair can be unlocked and moved over the tracks into the wardrobe. When moving the air stair into the wardrobe, the unlocked light illuminates. When the air stair is locked inside the wardrobe, the lights on the control panel will extinguish. In case the electrical actuator fails, it is necessary to use the backup actuator for extension of the air stair. With the passenger door open, the operator can unlock the air stair and pull it from the locked position inside the wardrobe. When the air stair is in front of the door, it will be locked in that position. On the control panel, the backup button has to be pressed. And then the backup down button has to be pressed to extend the air stair. The air stair will extend until the wheels touch the floor. In case of failure of the electrical actuator, the backup actuator can also be used to retract the air stair. On the control panel, press the backup button and then the up button to retract the air stair. When the air stair is in front of the door in the retracted position, the air stair can be unlocked and pushed over the tracks into the wardrobe. When the air stairs are completely inside the wardrobe, they are locked. When the stair is retracted or extended, and if the backup light is blinking, the air stair must be operated by using the backup system. Electronic Flight Bag General Description The EFB is a touchscreen device, Windows XP-based system, that can support different applications such as electronic documents and electronic charts. The EFB configuration includes interfaces to receive, USB memory devices, latitude, longitude data from FMS output, wireless high-speed connection, screen use. The EFB is designed to be operated by fingertips. A round pointing device can be used if preferred, provided it has a smooth tip. Scratches may occur in case of use with hard point devices. To clean it, use a soft cloth dampened with water. Chemical or abrasive cleaners must not be used. EFB Electrical Supply Normal Supply The DC Bus 1 supplies electrical power to EFB 1, left seat pilot, and DC Bus 2 to EFB 2, right seat pilot. Internal Battery the EFB is equipped with an internal battery that keeps the system powered in case of a failure in the normal electrical supply. The battery life can vary between 30 minutes to 2 hours. The battery full charge takes approximately 2 hours whenever the normal electrical supply is available. Controls and Indications 1. Ambient Light Sensor an integrated ambient light sensor adjusts initial brightness level at power-up. 2. Power button. On, off. The on, off power button is a multifunction control and indicator. The power button lights up and flashes to indicate different states. 3. Brightness, dim button. These are the sun and moon-shaped keys. Press to manually lighten or darken the display screen. 4. Close button. This key is located at the top right corner of the bezel and, when pressed, closes the currently active application. 5. Soft key menu. Application links are gathered into three main groups, Main, Tools, and Communication for easy navigation. 6. Bezel keys. Bezel keys provide direct access to key navigational functions of the pilot view. These keys are used to facilitate easy access to information across applications. 7. Keyboard Latch Open Close To open the keyboard, pull the latch until it unlocks. Then slide open the unit, pushing on the top and bottom parts to separate. Push the latch to lock. 8. Hot Key Vertical Line Select Key this key can be used for quick access to a user-defined application. 
9. Arrow keys, page up, page down. These keys allow the user to scroll, pan, within documents, graphic pages, depending on the application. 10. Applications. Shows a list of current active applications. Use the left and right arrow keys to select an application, and then press the Enter key to open the desired application. 11. Escape. This key allows the user to cancel certain functions within an application. This will depend if the application supports this key. 12. Main. This key shows the main menu. 13. Video. Unavailable. A message, no video source found, will be displayed. 14. Zoom in, out. Plus or minus keys enlarge or reduce the image or chart presented on screen. Note, this function applies to properly configured applications. Main Menu. The main menu provides access to applications selected by the operator. Tools Menu. The Tools menu provides access to several utilities, including password-protected access to Windows. Communications menu. The Communications menu is defined to provide a direct access to communication options available. Note, operators will be responsible to select, install, and manage the applications and functionalities used in the EFB platform. Operators are solely responsible for selection of applications to be used, installation of applications and functionalities, management of the update process for each application. It is the operator's responsibility to obtain approval from the appropriate authority for use of the EFB, including installation process, software application functionalities, and update process. The information provided by the Class II EFB platform shall be considered advisory only and should not be used in place of any primary flight display. The QRH with the latest revision incorporated must be on board in hard copy format. The in-flight entertainment IFE system is composed of a live TV and a satellite digital radio system. The IFE provides passengers with live TV, pre-recorded content, and live radio programming during flight, but is overridden during passenger address audio and pre-recorded passenger briefing system announcements. Additionally, a cabin surveillance system, CSS, is installed in the airplane to monitor the passenger cabin from either pilot's seat. Live TV and satellite digital radio provides passengers with satellite television and radio entertainment programming via direct broadcast satellite system. The GPS antenna determines the position of the airplane and sends this information to the antenna control system to provide azimuth and elevation steering information to the live TV antenna, allowing it to capture and track satellite broadcast signal. The satellite broadcast signal is decoded in the live TV systems rack and modulated for transmission to the seat electronic boxes installed under each pair of passenger seats. The seat electronic boxes demodulate and tune the signal for each seat and then send it to each video display unit and headphone. A credit card reader is installed close to the video unit. It transfers data to the seat electronic box and provides the means for passengers to pay fees to watch the pay-per-view programming. The system is controlled by the IFE CSS control panel in the cockpit from where the electrical power can be manually controlled to IFE rack components, the IFE cabin components, and CSS and the entertainment system control panel in the cabin which contains the live TV system controls and a reset button. For individual selections, a passenger control unit is installed for each passenger in the seat armrest where TV and radio channels, brightness and volume adjustments can be made. The entertainment system distribution starts to operate when the aircraft is energized. No crew action is required. Once the TV and audio channels are generated, 
They can be made available to each of the passenger seats according to the operation mode setting. The flight attendant can, at any moment, set the system to one of these operation modes through the control panel. Standby. The VDUs show a standby graphic. Pause. The distribution of the broadcast TV channels stops. The VDU show a black screen, and the VSU video pauses. Free. This makes the entertainment audio video available at all of the passenger seats for free. Paid. Credit card is needed to make the service available. When paid services is selected, the credit card reader reads magnetically recorded stripes from credit cards and transfers the data via VDU to the seat electronic box. The MRM collects the data from each one of the seat electronic boxes for further transmission to a ground station via the WADL system. If at any time a poor satellite signal is received, the MRM audio video output for that particular channel is blanked until a reliable signal is reestablished. If any other problem occurs with the video or audio presentations, the system can be reset by the flight attendant using the reset switch. When momentarily pressed, power is removed from the system for 30 seconds. During the reset process, the reset push button illuminates in amber. The electronic checklist provides quick and easy access to the normal procedures checklist. ECL location. The electronic checklist is physically located in the processor, module 6, on MAU3, and has a maximum power consumption of 11.5 watts, supplied by DC bus 2. The working area in the cockpit are the two MFDs, multifunction displays, and the two CCDs, cursor control devices. In the MFD, the electronic checklist is shown at the bottom of the screen, which represents one-third of its relative size. It also has a capacity of nine display lines, with 36 characters each. The CCD cursor control device has three elements used to access the ECL, the touchpad, the enter buttons, and the rotary knobs. The touchpad. The CCDs have a single touchpad used to navigate within the electronic checklist. Finger down, cursor down, finger up, cursor up, finger left or right. Cursor left or right. The enter buttons are used as follows. To activate menus or functions by selecting a checklist button. To check an open loop item. To make sure that a checklist is complete. The two enter buttons, one on each side of each CCD, have the same functions. There are two rotary knobs which scroll through any checklist and have the same functions. Clockwise, cursor goes to the next item. Counterclockwise, cursor goes to the previous item. ECL initialization. After the aircraft power-up procedure has been accomplished, this is the first screen that appears on the MFD. Use the mouse to perform the actions. Click on the initialization process. After that, the checklist is ready to be used.
Click on the Before Start checklist. The first item to be checked is the ECL update version related to the Quick Reference Handbook. After this first step, the Before Start is ready to be completed. Note that once one item is checked, the cursor jumps automatically to the next one. At the end, after the last item is checked, the method checklist complete will appear. After that, the ECL automatically takes you back to the list of normal checklist. Here you can observe that the before start is checked off and the cursor is automatically set on the after start, which represents the next incomplete normal checklist. From this point until the end, proceed the same way as the previous one. ECL Elements The ECL elements are Title Current Line Indicator Line Items and the function buttons. Title The title represents the type of checklist like, for example, normal or checklist name such as before start, current line item indicator. The current line item indicator is a hollow green arrow that indicates the current checklist item or checklist that is being executed at the moment. When an item is checked, the current line indicator automatically goes to the next item. This procedure facilitates the ECL operation because the pilot practically only uses the enter button on the CCD throughout a checklist. Line items, open loop and closed loop. There are two types of line items in the electronic checklist. Open loop and closed loop. The open loop only receives input from the flight crew. The closed loop line items are only available in a normal checklist and receive inputs from the aircraft systems and sensors. The normal checklist automatically covers the following systems. Parking brake lever, engine 1 and 2 start-stop switch, thrust lever 1 and 2 position, auto brake reject takeoff position knob, slat flaps lever, Landing gear lever, hydraulic knobs, fuel knobs, packs 1 and 2 push buttons. As an example of closed loop item, we can get the before start checklist where the items engine 1 and 2 thrust lever are not checked off. When you move the thrust levers to idle position, the system senses the movement of the thrust levers and automatically checks these items. Checklist Function Button The Checklist Function Button opens a menu that includes the following functions. Undo, Checklist Reset, and Reset All. Undo the Undo button is used to undo the last crew action inside a checklist. Use the mouse in order to undo the last checkoff item.
Checklist reset. Resets all items inside a checklist and causes the system to reset the closed loop items. Use the mouse in order to reset all items inside a checklist. Reset all. Resets all checklists and causes the system to reset all closed loop items. Use the mouse in order to reset all checklists. Override. The override button is used to override a checklist while the cursor is in a menu and a checklist item while the cursor is inside a checklist. Use the mouse in order to override the after start checklist. The message checklist overridden will be displayed when the entire checklist is overridden. Main Menu The Main Menu button is used to open a pop-up menu that includes the following functions. User Defined To access the User Defined Checklist Menu. And Normal To access the Normal Checklist Menu. The Electronic Checklist Free Player Elements The Free Player Elements are the MFD Panel and the CCD Rotary Knob Representation. To access the ECL Free Player, you will use your own mouse and the CCD Rotary Knob Representation. The mouse has two functions. The left button is used as the enter button on the CCD. And the mouse cursor that is used to navigate with the free player as a touchpad on the CCD. The CCD rotary knob representation simulates the actual CCD rotary knob and when required is accessed through the mouse as follows. Clockwise. Cursor goes to the next item. Counterclockwise. Cursor goes to the previous item.